In this Ruby coding exercise, we are going to build out what is called a weighted lottery method. So what this essentially means is we need to build out a method that can take a set of weights and then it, depending on what the weights are, it can give some behavior that lends itself towards those weights. And I know that may sound very confusing and this is definitely a little bit more on the non-trivial side from a functionality perspective, but I think you'll be impressed with how well Ruby can handle this type of system. So I right here, I've added quite a bit more documentation to the example, to your starter code, and also to the tests, just because this is a little bit harder to explain. So let's walk through that before I let you go. You go build this and then get into the solution. So right here, I have a basic set of weights. And now it's not limited to simply two. And we're going to go through an example that has more than two. So our weights need to be very dynamic. We can't just say, okay, like in this example, we have a winning and a losing option. If you come down here to the other test, we have winning, breaking even, and losing. And these names also don't have to be hard-coded. This could be gold, silver, and bronze. It just, uh, from the way the system works, it has to be completely dynamic. So this is just a basic hash, and the hash is going to be what the argument is. So the way that the system should work is if we call our weighted lottery and we pass in weights like I have there on line six, that means that if you play this game a thousand and one times, then it should come up losing a thousand times and winning only once. So this is a heavily skewed lottery. Uh, if you come down to the second example right here, this lottery is not quite as skewed. So imagine if you want to have kind of a real world mental framework for when you'd build something like this out. Imagine that you were building out a system for a casino or some type of gaming type of system. And you want to make sure that the house always wins, or not that it always wins, but it, that it wins the majority of the time and does not lose money. So what we have here is you have winning one time, you have breaking even a hundred times, and then you have losing a thousand times. And so these are the weights. Each one of these values is the respective weight for that key. And if you come down, uh, this is not in relation to the solution at all. It simply is how I'm testing it. So what I do is I run through the entire system a thousand times, and then I call the weighted lottery method. I pass in the weights. So in this test, the weights are these three weights right here. And then if the result is losing, then I increment the lost count by one. If it's broke even, I increment it by one, and then if they won, so the last scenario, then I increment that. And then at the very bottom set of tests, I make sure that lost, there are more lost counts than broke even, and then also that there are more broke even items than one. This is something that if you ever have tried to build automated tests for random behavior, it can be pretty tricky. But in this scenario, I think a thousand times is enough times to make sure that the weights are working. At a very high level, just what this means, just so it's 100% clear that if you play this game, you play this lottery a thousand times, then you should definitely get losing popping up the most. You should get breaking even, coming up second, and then winning should be in a pretty far distance third. So now that you have a good idea for how it looks, what the input is, and then also what the output is, then I want you to pause the video and I want you to go and try to build this. And then when you come back, I will walk through exactly how I personally would build out this solution. So welcome back if you tried to build that out. If you were not successful, do not worry. This is not a trivial 
feature to build in the least. So let's walk through how I personally would build this. So I would start with iterating through these weights. And in Ruby, we have a few ways of looping through a hash. And right here on line seven, we have an example hash, but this could take in three weights, two weights, it could take in a hundred weights, it really doesn't matter. Our system needs to be able to handle all of those scenarios. So I'm going to loop over a hash, and I want to, as I'm doing that, I wanna be building an array. So the way I can do that is I can say weights dot each with object, which is an enumerable method in Ruby. And I want to build an array. So I'm gonna pass each with object an array, and then I'm gonna pass it a block. Now, this is where we're gonna get a little bit tricky because when you're looping through a hash, you have the ability to access both the key and the value. And the way that you can do that, because if you're used to most Ruby blocks, like working with inject or anything like that, then you're used to having two block variables. So you'd have something like X and Y, and those are your block variables. When we're iterating through these weights, when we're iterating through a hash like we are, we need to access the key and the value. So we need to access both winning, in this case, and then one, and then losing, and a thousand. So the way we can do that is inside of the block, we can pass in a set of parens, and we can split up our key and our value. So here I can say weight underscore key and then comma weight underscore val. And then the second item is the array. So I'm just gonna call this container array. And now inside of here, it's going to loop through. So now that we have this in place, this is just going to, in our example there on line nine, this is only gonna loop twice. Now inside of that loop, so each through each one of those, what I wanna do is I want to loop through it as many times as there are weights. So for winning, I want to create a single nested loop. For losing, I wanna create a thousand nested loops. So I wanna iterate a thousand times. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll say the weight val, so that's gonna be, for example, one or a thousand. So I'll say weight val dot times. So here I'm gonna have that nested loop. And inside of here, I'm gonna build out, I'm gonna add to that container ar array. So when we're going through each with object, with each one of those iterations, we're able to build out that collection. So I'm gonna say container underscore array. And then I'm just going to add the weight key. And so what that's going to do is it's going to add in our example, either winning or losing. It's gonna pass that symbol and it's just gonna add that to the array. So let's see exactly how this would work right here. So I'm going to call this and right here you can see what the output is. So when I call weighted lottery, it returns an array right now. And as you can see, it, the first time it picked out winning. So it actually picked out that very first item. And then after that, it's gonna go a thousand times with losing. So this is giving us very close to the solution that we need, because as you notice, there are no more entries for losing. But this isn't perfect yet, because remember, we want to pick a single item out. And so the logic that I'm wanting to implement here is something I can do with a single word, just one single method call inside a Ruby. And so if you think about this, just at a high level, don't even think at it from a coding perspective, what I wanna do is imagine that this is a bag of words. So think of it as a literal bag and almost like Scrabble letters or something like that. And you have a thousand and one items in the bag and a thousand of them say losing and one of them says winning. What I wanna do is I want to reach in and grab a word, and it has to be at random. So what that means is that from a probability perspective, I will pick out winning only one out of every thousand and one times, which is exactly what we want. This is the type of weighting system that we're talking about. So what I can do in Ruby 
is instead of creating all of that myself, at the very end of this end block, I can just say dot and then sample. So if you think about it, it, going back to our analogy on sampling a, or picking out something from that bag of words, I want to sample one of those words. Sample is Ruby, gives, it's Ruby's method for being able to pick out a random sample, a single item from the array. So now let's come down. So now instead of it returning that entire array, it's only gonna return a random sample of it. So if I run this now, it's losing. If I run it again, it's losing, run it again, losing, and this should happen. It should be incredibly rare that it shows winning. And so that is working really nicely. Let's also test it out. So we have winning, losing, and let's just make this so that it gives us some a, a little bit easier to read behavior. So we could say winning and we can add another one. So we'll say break even here and then break even let's just say that they should break even every three times something like that so now if i run this again now you can see that it gave us winning because now the ability to win is much higher now you have if you count these up you have one plus three is four four plus ten is fourteen you now have a one in fourteen chance of winning now if i run this again it's losing which is kind of what we'd expect running again it's losing, running it again, losing again. And so this is working perfectly. So because losing should be there the ma majority of the time, each time you run this, we have a 10 in 14 chance of losing coming up. So this is doing pretty much the exact behavior that you'd want. You can also play around with this if you just want to test out and make sure that it's doing exactly what you want. So you could make these even much closer and just say that, okay, I want winning. Do you only have a one chance or you have a one out of five chance at, or one out of six chance uh, breaking even one out of three and then 50% of the time you should get losing. So let's look on line 17, you have losing, then you have breaking even, then you have losing, then you have breaking even. So this is working really nicely. So now that we have all of that, let's just make sure that our tests are working. So I'll open up RSpec and run this. So I have RSpec, this is for the May 23rd exercise. If I run that, we have two examples, zero failures. So that means that as we go through these pretty extensive tests, so we tested it manually maybe a dozen times, these tests went through it a couple thousand times to make sure that the right weights were there and they're in proportion. So very nice if you went through that. I know that it was a non-trivial type of exercise to build out if you've never done that before. So very good work. You now know how to build out a weighted lottery method in Ruby.